in the name of my ancestors. Peace forever and always, and welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. I am the host or the gatekeeper of this ministry known here. Well, I'm known here on social media. Wherever you may find me, I am known as the mighty, mighty, mighty mm, angel snub nub seven. I am your brother and your friend, soul brother number one, Talik Ibn Ra. Oh man, I am so happy. I really, due to my work, I really don't feel like making a video, but I have this time to spare and I really want to talk to us. So please bear with me as I try to uh, present and explain an opinion that you may disagree with, but I want you to just give me a chance to be listened to, and I will be so happy. It is always an honor. It is always a thrill. It is always wonderful to come before these of whom I call the people of soul, the descendants of slaves born in America. These who are called Black African American, Black Muslims, Hebrew Israelites, and Kemetic and Nuwabian, and you are so, so Christians and atheists and agnostics. We are so numerous in our variety. But we are very good people at heart, beautiful people at heart. But sometimes, you must admit, we can become very, very nasty. And this is something that we need to control. It's not us. We are a loving people. We show this love to others. Now it is time that we show love to ourselves. Before we begin this video lecture of which I hope that I can keep it within an hour's time. I don't want to keep us long. I know that we, many of us have short attention uh, spans, but I'm going to try to make it, uh, you know, a little upbeat and hopefully I can keep your attention as we go through this journey of what must be done in order to keep a people called African Americans from going extinct. That is the subject that I've chosen for this particular video lecture, the extinction of American black people. Before we get started, I want to send a few shout outs real quickly. And if I don't mention your name, just know that you are very important to me. You are very important in the struggle for the liberation of these people, our people of whom are lost, made deaf, dumb, and blind in the hells of North America. And I'm so happy that you would give me a chance to offer a solution, a real solution to this most complex and never ending problem. I wish to send a shout out to the brothers and sisters in Ferguson, Missouri, and in Baltimore, Maryland, those who participated in what some may call riots. 
Now, of course, there are those who took advantage of the riots whose only purpose was to take advantage of the situation, go out in the street and try to get something for free by looting the local businesses and whatever. I'm not talking about them. I'm not talking about looters. I'm not talking about troublemakers. I'm talking about you in Ferguson, Missouri, you in Baltimore, Maryland, you who sincerely got to the point, I stood all I can stand, I can't stand no more. You went out in the street and expressed your anger. And that is a good thing. And you should still be angry. But of course, you always have those who always come to us, settle down, settle down. It's not you who are being murdered in the street. It's not you who are being redlined against. It's not you who is being discriminated, placed in incarceration, and you knew and you know that that person was innocent when you put them in jail, but because they had dark skin in housing, we're discriminated against. We are painted in the media as clowns and violent savages. This is the type of stuff that we as a people have had to deal with going on 500 years and you deserve to be angry. And many of you, the heroes in Ferguson, Missouri and Baltimore, Maryland, you turned the TV off and you went out in the street. That's where you belong. But next time, organize. Next time, don't go out in the street like that. Organize yourself. Be smarter. Don't let emotion control you. Use your anger in a smart and wise way. Oh, wow. And you will get a better result than what you got because now Ferguson is becoming forgotten. Baltimore is becoming forgotten. The parents or the relatives of Freddie Gray in Baltimore probably got a big payday and they no longer is interested in what happened to Freddie Gray because they got money. We have to deal with our traders. We have to deal with our sellouts. That's who a real sellout is. You are going to go to Disneyland because your cousin and brother or uncle or wife or whomever was killed by racist and the city paid them off. So now it's back to normal. Wait a little while and let us kill some more niggas. Do you understand? That's our reality. And I am calling those in Ferguson heroes. You are my hero. You are my hero in Baltimore. I will not come to Ferguson or Baltimore to docile you down. Tell you to calm down. No, you're supposed to be angry. And we need to remain angry. That's why we stay and continue to be in this slave-like condition till this day. And that's why races or nobody else around the world respects us. Because the only thing you're going to get mad for a few minutes and then sit your lazy ass down. That's not what this ministry is about. So if that's what you are about, being angry and pouting like a little child and somebody tell you to sit your ass down and you do it, then this is not the place to be. This ministry is about 1,000% liberation of the mind, liberation of the body, 1,000%. If you can't get that, if we can't get that, huh, then perhaps it is best that the black people of America become extinct. It's better to be extinct, it's better to be dead than continue to live this life and your reality is we are nothing but slaves, jokes. So again, shout out to the heroes in Baltimore, Maryland, 
in Ferguson, Missouri. Shout out to my listening audience who have stood with me since you heard my voice in 2007, 2008, 2009, 10, 11, up to the present day. Thank you so much. I appreciate that you did not fall for the lies, these falsehood, these allegations and silly stories that people put out on me. Thank you so much and I appreciate it. There are those who say, well, let me continue my shout outs real quick. I, I send my shout out to my listening audience. And like I always tell us, not only should we be a listening audience, but it is time that you take some kind of action. And I know the type of action that I call for. You got to be a real man. You got to be a real woman. You got to be ready to give your life for real, not just say it out of your mouth. And many people know that. That's why they stay away from me. Because you're going to go to work here. And I'm going to tell you there's a possibility you're going to die here. But you will die with honor and dignity. And any enemy respect those who die with honor and dignity. And not these cowards that I always find myself surrounded by. I sent a shout out to my brother on the East Coast documentary maker, truth teller, my brother and friend of whom I just met a few days ago, really, my brother Omar Shabazz, my historian and my good friend, brother Amel Foundation, and my brother Charles in California, my brother Michael X. Anderson in California. My brother David Brayboy. My sisters Brenda on the East Coast. Then my sister Fanadia. I also send shouts out to J.T. Riley. Y'all thought that J.T. Riley don't like me, don't you? You think that that brother and I had, had some kind of hate thing going on. But that is not the way of brother J.T. Riley. I send out shout out to J.T. Riley and my brother t -Mont, Derek Grayson. And I even sent a shout out to a brother of whom many of you may know as Brother Phil of the Advice Show TV on YouTube. And again, my listening audience of whom have been under the sound of this voice for so long. Just be patient. This ministry is going to win the fight. This ministry is going to rise because I love the fight. This ministry is going to rise because it's the only vessel that really shows us and gives us a picture of what truly must be done. This ministry is going to rise because it is like our brother Malcolm. Malcolm was a real revolutionary. And Malcolm understood spirituality. Malcolm understood uh, religion. Malcolm also understood reality. Malcolm understood revolution. I dedicate this video lecture to the memory of our prince, our king, brother Malcolm X Shabazz and his family, sister Betty Shabazz and his children that still continue to hold up their father's name to this very day. He was a real man and he deserved 
never to be forgotten. There are those of whom accuse me of many things, and one of them is I am a celebrity seeker, which makes no sense. If I wanted celebrity, I would be making up some stuff for you to believe in or, you know, to make you feel good. Or I would just tell you about the life-giving teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. I would be telling you about how wonderful Jesus is. I would be telling you about Dr. York. I would be telling you about becoming a Pan-Africanist and, 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 and resurrecting Marcus Garvey. All these things that y'all love and enjoy because it makes you feel good. I love this brother, Malcolm X, but I'm not going to teach you and talk about Malcolm X. That's not what it's about. It's not about becoming a celebrity. It's about coming up, coming up out of a horrendous condition. Either you want to be a free soul brother and sister, or you want to continue to be a slave. I'm not going to call you black. I'm not going to call you African American. I'm not going to call you the names that was forced on us by races. There are no dark skinned people that call themselves black. There are no dark skinned people that call themselves African. All these things come from up out of a racist construct. And I will not place that and continue to put that on us. You are more than African. You are more than black. You want to talk about Africa? When, this, when you have the right to live on any part of this earth that you choose. Any place that will make it where you are able to Feed, give you shelter, and clothe yourself. Don't have to be African. Any place that can do that for you. You have become obsessed with Africa when you should be, when you should become obsessed with this whole planet. And if you was in your right state of mind, you'd be concerned with conquering of the whole universe. Because that's where we come from. We come from up out of this universe. Instead of obsessed with a little planet. You are obsessed with a neighborhood. When you can control a whole country. A whole continent. I don't understand you. You limit yourself. But you know a slave does not think. On a high level. A slave is comfortable. In what. Masa. Or what some god or alien or whatever. You have bowed down to. Gives you. Whatever crumbs that fall off. Masa table. So if Masa will only give you Africa. You happy with that. I want Africa. Well you can. I don't, if that's what you want. I have a greater vision for us than that. If I wanted celebrity, I could tell jokes. I, I opened up for that Caucasian guy, uh, the one that, uh, do you know, are you smarter than a fifth grader? Is that the show? Jeff Foxworthy, I opened up for him long time ago. When I did comedy clubs, I started around the same time as Cedric the Entertainer. So if I had kept it up, who knows where I have I might be seeking celebrity. I'm not an entertainer. I'm not here to... I don't care whether you like me or not. And you should not care whether you like me or not. 
you should just want to understand or do I offer that which can help us get up out of a condition. You don't have to like me. You don't have to love me. If I want a celebrity, I could just use my voice and tell you what you want to hear. Just like men tell women what they want to hear. Oh, baby, ooh, your lips are so fine and your eyes are so pretty and your, you got pretty skin. Just tell you this is a situation where you have to accept the reality of things. And if nobody is bringing you reality, then they are doing you no good. And perhaps it is better that you become extinct. Mm. One of the things that we fail to do and don't like doing is show each other love. Now, I went into a store and I had a taste for pizza. I went to this store and I noticed that all the staff was young soul brothers and sisters, teen soul brothers and sisters. I ordered the pizza, they made the pizza and I took it home. And when I got home, I called the store and I told Listen now, I told those young people that you did a wonderful job on this pizza. I am so happy to have it. Thank you very much. And the teenagers that uh, made the pizza, you ought to hurt them. They were so happy. We made that. Yeah, we made that. They were so happy. See, that don't cost me nothing. But I made those youngsters day. They saw that I was an older person. And it brought joy to them that this older person would call and tell them about a wonderful job they had done. Didn't cost me a dime, but I made that day. It's so easy just to show our people a little love. But you rather complain, you didn't put enough sauce on this pizza, ain't enough cheese, you burnt it. I don't care if it did have problems. That's not the point. The point is to show our people love, especially our younger people who are trying to fight the temptation of drugs and alcohol and stealing and lying and all the other negative things that's out there that's waiting to get there, get his hands on them. So I hope that this little gesture, they will always remember and it will help them to maintain a life that is beneficial not only to themselves, but they can bring to the community itself. <clears> hmm. <throat> Now, let me, hopefully within the next 30 minutes, cruise through this subject matter. <clears throat> I'm a celebrity. And you won't send me a dime. And I won't spend your dime unless I'm sure that you can get something back out of it. You give these suckers your money you give them your love and your time and what do you get out of it you're not getting nothing I know because I've done it myself gave my love, gave my time gave my all they are rich and I'm still struggling I should have just worked for myself you have so many fakers out here but they can smile and they can tell you a pretty story and y'all go for it. And you're still a Negro slave. Perhaps it is better or it is best that the so-called Negro of America become extinct. We always said, brother, we, 
brother, sister, we need black unity. It's easier said than done. Do you know why it's easier said than done? Because, first of all, your first problem is we are not a people. I will say that again. We are not a people. We call African Americans a people. We call black people a people when you are not a people. We are in tribes. We have never been a people. When the racist slave masters freed, physically freed our ancestors, they left the plantations or they left prison and jail wherever they found themselves. And this, this group of slaves went that way. That group of slaves went this way. This one went north. That one went south, east, west, northwest, whatever. There never was an attempt for them to come together as a people and develop themselves. Everybody went out and did their own thing. Have you ever seen animals locked up? And then you open the gate and the animals start coming out. That, that cow go this way. That other cow go this way. And they all go. Now, <laughs> this is the amazing thing. Animal, cows are herd animals. So eventually they will find one another and, be, and, and become a, a, a herd again. Black people, the people of soul, the descendants of slaves born in America, we have never become a herd. We've never become a people. We develop tribes. And that tribe mentality continues to this, to this day. You are in the black Muslim tribe. You are the Hebrew Israelite tribe. You are, I'm just an American tribe. You are a Nuwabian tribe. You are the Kemetic tribe. You get the picture. We are all in tribes. And then you talk about black unity. Then you talk about Africa. Africa was filled with tribes. Africa was never united. Always separated countries who didn't give a care about the other country. And then you had tribes, and you still have that tribal mentality. But yet and still, you know that the only thing that's going, the only thing that is going to help our situation is what you call black unity. But you're so loyal to your tribe that you cannot unify. And the same thing with the Native American people that was here in this country. They were all in tribes. But when the unified, whew, but when the unified European came, it was easy for them to begin to pick you off because you were in tribes. And since you did not care what happened to the other tribe, oh, that's their problem. The European is taking their land. You did not care. You did not know that sooner or later the same enemy of that tribe would be your enemy doing the same exact thing to you. But by the time you learned this lesson, it was too late. Now the European has all of North America the, and, and, and he controls Africa also. Because everybody is still in tribes. And in America, the races do anything they want to to the people of soul, the descendants of slaves born in America, because everybody is in tribes. So if your son is killed, I don't care. You're not part of my tribe. Your daughter is raped. I don't care. Not part of my tribe. There is no concern. Mm -mm -mm. You are and we are obsessed with tribes. If you want freedom, we must understand and you must know that the only thing, the only power we have 
is the power of our unity. You must understand and be able to tolerate the differences of us in our tribes. At minimum, we must understand, look, I don't want your religion. I don't care nothing about what you believe in. I don't want your belief. I don't want your religion. I don't want all this other stuff that you're talking about. I don't care about what you think about evolution. I don't care about your God coming out the sky and the dead coming out you know, and the dead coming back to life. That I don't believe what you want to believe. I just want freedom. I just want relief from an oppressor. And I need your help. We both have the same enemy. We're not in the same tribe. We don't think the same. The enemy, the Europeans, the racist Caucasian, pink people didn't have no problem with that. They are different right now to this day. There are atheist Caucasian people, pedophile Caucasian people, Christians, Mormons, but they all come together against the dark people. And you still in a tribe. They are in tribes that are united. That's why it's called the United States of America. Each state in this country can operate by itself if need be. But when they come together as the United States, look how powerful Look what look how it has developed when the tribes come together under one common purpose, under one common goal. And that's why it's, it should be easy if you really want to be free from an oppressor. It should be easy for us to come together under one umbrella for a common purpose and a common goal. But we are so filled with self-hatred. And we are so loyal to our tribe. We want everybody to be like us. I don't want to be like you. You don't want to be like me. Everybody's on different levels. I, what you like, I might not like. But we have the same enemy. If you cannot unite, the only thing you can do is make mockery, degrade your own people, kill your own people, then perhaps it is best that black people, so-called black people born in America, you should become extinct. Every day, races are planning your extinction. Genocide, practicing genocide against not only dark-skinned people in America, but around this planet. And they are failing. However, you may succeed where your enemies fail due to your, stupid, your stupidity, your arrogance, and general, you just, we, we in general have become insane. Self-destruction at its best. You have no respect for the black woman. And the woman is the best helper you will ever have. And we sit around and we tolerate calling black women the sisters of soul. We call them whores and bitches and all this other nonsense and degrade them. Why are they? If the black woman, if the women soul sisters, if they are bitches and hoes and all this other stuff that you call them, why are they like that? It is because the soul brothers, you have failed since slavery. Since slavery, the black man, you have failed to protect your woman. You have allowed another man to educate your, your women and children. You have allowed another man to provide for your women and children. 
you've allowed another, another man to influence your women and your children and you wonder why you don't have no control over your women and your children. Although they do love you, they cannot view you as a man because you do not provide and you damn sure don't protect. We get our priorities all messed up. We talk about we need black business. What is the key to any, what is the key to, to the survival of any people? What is it that can attract our people to the message of revolution and liberation from a vicious oppressor. What business should you be in? You should be in the business. Of food. Clothing. And shelter. How wonderful a woman can feel. When her stomach is full. And she has. Beautiful clothes. And she has a roof over her head. Along with her children. Your priorities are are messed up. Some of you talking about a school. What's the sense of having a school if you can't eat? What's the sense of having a school and you have no clothes to wear? What's the sense of having a school and there's no shelter, there's no house to live in so that you can get up in the morning, wash up, and go to school? If you produce food, clothing, and shelter, then that gives you the economic strength to bring into existence everything else that you need. Food, clothing, and shelter will give you the revenue, the easy revenue and the support system in order to get your education, get your school to go. It's very simple. We don't, we got our priorities all messed up. And of course you don't want your children educated by the enemy. You want to keep your women away from racist men. You want to keep your children away from racist people because of their influence. But how wonderful it would be if soul brothers can get together under, under one umbrella due to having a common goal and a purpose and that purpose is to produce food, clothing, and shelter. Then set up an educational system. So that our women and children can be taken care of by the soul brother. <clears throat> there is no unity be because we are tribal. Another problem we have with so-called black unity is that you have so-called black leadership. And your black leadership <clears throat> has no vision. And I am told that where there is no vision, the people perish. And right now, so people in America, you may not be extinct, but you are decomposing. And you stink to yourself and you stink to the world on the outside. You don't like real leaders. You don't like real brothers like Malcolm X. Where's my? Right here. You, you talk about it. You, you really don't understand Malcolm. You don't like real people. You want somebody, you want these leaders like you, you have on YouTube. You have you like these leaders that sell you dreams that that can tell you these.
beautiful fairy tales. You want some kind of mystery God or alien or something to come out the sky and save you and you don't have to do nothing. You can watch TV. The Housewives of Atlanta. American Idol. The NBA Finals. You want to sit on your lazy ass and do nothing. And that's good for slaves. And I understand your mentality because I understand that you're a slave. I'm not a slave. I can't do this by myself. But I'm not a slave. And these racists will tell you I'm not your slave. I'm not interested. This ministry represents 1000% liberation of the mind. I am not going to be a slave to God. I am not going to be a slave to an alien. I'm not going to be a slave to the devil. I'm not going to be a servant to nobody. I would rather be dead. I would rather be extinct. Not interested. These leaders sell you these dreams. Jesus coming. Here he, oh no, no, that ain't him. Jesus, it's been 2,000 years. If you was waiting on a cab and that cab is late by five minutes, you will have a fit. Where you been? I called you five minutes ago. Where, where you at? I'm not going to give you a tip. You will tell the cab driver. But Jesus has not shown up in 2,000 years. And you still willing to wait. I was taught about the mothership when I was in the nation of Islam. I was told about the mothership. We have been told the story of the mothership for 80 years. Oh, there's the mothership. Oh, no, that ain't it. There has been sightings of the mothership. But the mothership has done nothing for us. What's the sense of having a mothership sighting? Oh, I, I, I saw the mothership. It's over there. Oh, I, 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 there, there go the mothership. But the mothership still have not done nothing for you. How many races have the mothership dropped a bomb on? But y'all still waiting. Because it's easier to wait on the mothership then get your lazy cowardly ass up and go fight for yourself and for your babies and for your women that's why black women don't respect soul brothers that's why soul sisters have no respect for us because they see a bunch of cowards lazy incompetent slave negro men The black man, so-called black man, you talk big, but you won't bust a grape. You see it on YouTube all the time. You, you hear these guys, they write big time stuff on Facebook or whatever. Won't bust a grape. Ain't doing nothing. Now, they will kill a black man. They will murder a soul sister, they will murder, they will harass a uh, soul brother and sister. You would do that. But see, that's another one of our mental problems. We are a people, well, I'm not going to say we're not a people, but we are a group that have been abused over 300 years. And this is something that you should notice in people who are abused. Abused people fear the one that is abusing them, the one that is oppressing them, that is hurting them. They fear them. But they will slap the hell out of people who try to help them, cuss you out. Anybody that's trying to help them, don't you see the pattern? In the mentality of these of, of whom I call soul people, the descendants of slaves born in America, there's a pattern. We are 
a group of persons that have suffered abuse over 300 years. We, no matter what come out of your mouth, you fear the racist Caucasian pink people. But you will murder and you will harass and you will torture another person that looks like you. The devil didn't have to kill Malcolm X. The niggas was happy to do it for him. Mm -mm -mm. So, what if you get yourself together and you build a school, you build a grocery store, you can bring back into reality Black Wall Street, and you're doing very, very good. What's the sense of doing all that? But you cannot protect what you what you build. So at any time, the enemy, whether it is legally legal or there is some state of emergency or whatever excuse, the devil can always come in and tear down your school. Drop bombs on your grocery store, your housing project, and anything that you built, and, uh, and you have to start all over again. Because you built your school and your business in the, in the house of racists. It does not make any sense. This is the reason why you need to separate or you need to also develop a military, a militia, to bring quick response to anybody who threaten your school, threaten your women and children, your bank, your hospital, and whatever else that you build with your hand. If you tear down my hospital, I'm tearing down yours. So a person like Sarah Sudan Seti that calls himself a general become a real general of the forces and when need be when the council gets together that represents all the tribes and the council says and decides it's time that we go to war then all the tribes and all the men the men are the first defense you expect men to do the fight so all eligible men it's time for us to go to war against these devils once and for all. Now you have, you've crossed the line. You will respect us. You will respect this. Now, of course, <clears throat> I'm not going to tell you you're dealing with people who have nuclear weapons and all kinds of weapons of mass destruction and so forth. But everybody, I don't care how strong and powerful you think you are, everything has a weak spot. The first weak spot that you can take advantage of is the fact that you already live in this country. So prepare yourself prior to actual battle and understand where uh, their infrastructure where they keep their weapons, water supplies, how they can move soldiers, and all kinds of stuff. You got to get yourself ready for the confrontation. You cannot take them on one on one. So if it becomes physical, you turn to guerrilla warfare. Prior to guerrilla warfare, you have to be, there are many other things that you can do. This is why black leadership needs to have vision. Where are we going to take the people? And you have to be creative in, in that endeavor. In the building process, in the defending process. When you stand up like a real man, 
not somebody they they can treat like a child. A child gets angry and pokes out his or her lip. Then mommy and daddy come by and say, you shut up. Sit down. Every time something is done to us, we stand up. Poke our lip out. Get mad for a few minutes. Then somebody tell us to sit your ass down. <coughs> Excuse me. And we do it. Nothing will change, soul brother, until you stand up like a man. And when you stand up like a man, soul brother of America, you will begin to see a change in your soul sisters. I don't care if they are prostitutes or strippers or ghetto and ratchet, all these things that y'all talk about. If, if the soul brothers stood up and began to behave and act and move like men instead of slaves, you begin to see a change in her. But you got to help her too. You got to stop lusting for her body. You got to control your penis. There is no sex. How can you, how can you say that sex feels good and you lie in bed and you're still under the control of racists. Oh man. You think that sex feel good. How good would sex be? Laying in the bed. With the woman that you love. On land. That you control. Knowing that you can get up. In the morning. And you are not under somebody else's racist, unjust law. You under the laws that you created and you are fair and just to everybody. Not only to soul brothers and sisters, but everybody that comes up under you. And as a man, that's what, if you're going to live in this country, then you should demand that from this vicious government. They should not be allowed to try our people. When our people do wrong, you tell them, give us the killer. Give us the thief. And we will try the thief in our courts. And if the federal government, you do not like the outcome or the verdict, then we can take the case to an international court. We should stop allowing ourselves to be under the uh, control and, un and, and under the and be allowed to be at the mercy of the justice system that we know is not just and fair to soul brothers and sisters in America if you were men these soul brothers that we see Nowadays, like I said before, wouldn't burst the grape. Malcolm X understood that if you really want freedom, you got to take it. You got to earn it. And that's why not only the Nation of Islam, that's why many others, even in his own organization, had a problem with Malcolm because Malcolm was telling them, you got to stand up and fight. Malcolm was having meetings and talking with real revolutionaries who was fighting and, and people who was dying for a cause. And y'all scared Negroes. You will threaten me. You will blow my car up but you will not touch the enemy. Bunch of lazy trifling. You want to go home and type and play on Facebook. You want to take your wife out to the jazz club and y'all drink wine and 
get a little drunk and high, then go home and make love. A comfortable, comfortable Negro. You become comfortable in your racism. Then you play on Facebook and YouTube. That makes you feel better. When you black power family, when all thing you can do is talk. And black has no power. Because you have not given it no power. You too scared to give it power. Because if it really had power, these races and these Arabs and these Chinese and everybody that come in your neighborhood they will respect you, but they don't. You just, you just something to, you just a, a whore they lay up with. Matter of fact, worse, because you pay them for the service. <laughs> wow. So with that said, perhaps it is best that the so-called black people of America become extinct. You cannot, you cannot help everybody. There are drug addicts. You can offer them help. They get over their addiction and they go on to be CEOs of a company or, or they have a successful career somewhere. Then you have drug addicts. No matter what you do, one day you will find them in the gutter, dead from an overdose. That is just the reality of life. That is yin and yang, positive and negative. Perhaps it is best that dark-skinned people go extinct. You're killing yourself. You are making babies outside of your so-called race. And pretty soon, the, the uh, Caucasian people right now are working on writing slavery out of American history. Because we are on a path of extinction. Pretty soon, you won't hear nothing about African American. We don't teach our children to be proud. We don't tell them nothing. So they are not proud of anything because they don't they don't know nothing. They have nothing to be proud of. They don't know so-called black history. And right now you are you are not making any history. You're not doing anything. So it can be remembered. And the men look like cowards. Many of you are not cowards, but you allow these other weak leaders to, to, to mellow you out and keep you cool when you should be angry just like me every day. The racists know I'm not a joke. I'm not playing with you. You are going to leave me the hell alone. It's time that we get this beast off our back once and for all. You are going to leave us the hell alone. Tired and sick of you. But first, we must get rid of this tribalism. Get yourself together and stop all this self-hatred and jealousy and backbiting. And ask Allah, God, to guide us on the right path. Thank you for listening. This is your brother, and just number seven. Until next time, like Don Cornelius say, love, peace, and soul.